Life. It seems like from the time we are born, there's only one course. Grow up, grow old, and die. Olam Hamidot, a guide to understanding and refining our character. Hi everyone, with Hashem's help, you are listening to another edition of Olam Hamidot. Uh, this is the book that uh, helps us to get in touch with ourselves, you know, uh, those things, uh, those personality traits we'd rather not talk about at all, uh, but anyone who is looking to uh, elevate themselves and to become uh, closer to Hashem uh, by refining their character traits will find a lot of value in this book. Um, and today we're going to be talking about what Midos are truly about, uh, but I'd like to invite you, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and you'll be notified of upcoming episodes. Um, and if you like this video, please share it with somebody and share in the mitzvah because you get a portion of their learning, whether they learned it or not. So it's a, it's, it's a great investment in your olam haba. So it's always great to help someone else uh, and to spread the word of Torah. So we're going to begin. It says, it is said in the name of Ram, uh, Rav Haim Vital that a person's midot are assessed purely on the basis of how he treats his wife. This statement is puzzling. However, for why should a person's minot be assessed solely on the basis of how he treats his wife and not on the basis of his interaction with other people? True, the marriage relationship is more important than other interpersonal relationships as explained in page 199. But why is this the only factor in assessing a parent's midot? Moreover, it is probable that a person spends most of his time outside the home. Considering that his interactions with his wife constitute a small portion of time, why then are his midos assessed purely on the basis of the way he treats her? Um, and this is kind of true. You know, your wife really knows you, right? Like we, and vice versa, your husband really knows you. Like it may be a small amount of time, but you ever notice when you're comfortable with somebody, you let your guard, your guard down and, and you know, like the pun says, you know, I, I let my hair down. And really what this is means that you're really, these people really know who you are, right? Like, and a lot of times, Unfortunately, they know the not so nice of our personality. Um, so this is very true. Even though we spend so little time, when you think about it, uh, with our spouses, they truly do knew, know who we are inside. And it continues, says, in order to answer this question, we need to recognize that the obligation of tikkun hamidot is not merely an external requirement to behave kindly and pleasant with others. Rather, is an internal obligation that requires us to refine our inner emotions and to perfect them according to the will of the Torah. Just as we understand that envy is a trait that lurks inside a person's heart, the same is true of all midot. Let's say a person performs many kind deeds. That is an impressive achievement, but it does not prove that that person has truly acquired a midot of hesed, that he truly cares about others, and the obligation to rectify one midot involves improving our inner character traits so the midot will be implanted in our souls. To the degree he has perfected his inner character, so are his midot measured. And if you want to know what a person's true inner character is, look at the way he treats his wife. Now, we also have a saying like, you know, for somebody who's not married, a woman, if you want to know how he will treat his wife, look to how he treats his mother. That's a good indicator as well, right? So he says, we, we've all seen people who appear to be good, they have good midot, they perform hesed, but at home they, are, they turn into completely different people and unfortunately do not treat their wives properly. Um, and I would probably add that their, the rest of the family, their children are, are not probably treated well either. And so sadly, therefore, there are many Jewish homes that are filled with conflict. And I heard uh, something very alarming, very saddening, and I'm sorry to even have to report this to the kahal, but I, I'm hearing that even... Uh, divorces among Frum families are uh, on par with even the Goisha families. Uh, so this is like something that we really have to focus on, which is the home. Uh, if we can't get it right in the home, uh, we're going to have little success out in the world. So it says the reason for this phenomenon is that, that since a person wants to find favor in people's eyes and wants to be liked and respected by them, he naturally behaves calmly around them. Without much thought and effort, he is 
uh, motivated by be, to behave pro properly. He is certainly afraid to do something truly bad in front of others, for he is afraid of what they will say about him. Now, again, this, we know a lot of people, doesn't just have to be this, the husband, right? I, I know the book, you know, we got to take this into context too. When this book was written, men were, were mainly studying this, this uh, sefer. Um, but we know people, whether they're goy, they're Jewish, whether they're woman, whether they're man, uh, that they do this all the time. We're seeing this. This is like an explosion of this kind of behavior where people are behaving in a certain way um, and they want to seem relevant. They want to seem uh, woke and they, you know, they, they make these. Uh, comments to make themselves more likable in the eyes of the masses, but truly they don't uh, really believe in the things that they're saying. So it says, consequently, the good behavior and the good midot that he displays before others are not altruistic, and he is acting this way only in order to earn their respect. In contrast, in his interactions with his wife, he's not afraid to show his bad midot since he does not receive any honor for displaying good behavior or good midot around her, right? Like, uh, there's no pat on the back because you took the garbage out, right? So, I mean, we should be complimenting our husbands when they're doing these things, but there is no pat on the back, which means that he's gonna, you know, he's gonna just be himself. He's gonna do what he wants to do. And same with the women. Uh, you know, most of the times women are not getting a pat on the back if they're cooking or whatever, right? Because it almost seems uh, that they're just doing their, their part of the job, right? So it says, Therefore, the way a person treats his wife shows to us to what extent he has perfected his inner character. Furthermore, when a person is in the presence of other people, he can easily hide his true feelings. Even if he harbors ill, Ill will towards, uh, towards a close friend, he is capable of concealing those feelings for two reasons. One, since he does not always have to be in his presence of that friend, he can wait until his anger dissipates. Two, even if he does have to be with that friend, the relationship doesn't require so much love that it will be obvious for his behavior that he's upset with his friend. The relationship of marriage, on the other hand, requires constant love and therefore, if a husband is angry with his wife, it is difficult for him to hide his anger and it is a, it's virtually impossible that he will treat her the same way he treats her when he is not angry. Additionally, if the husband's heart is filled with grievances against his wife, it is practically impossible that she, with her woman's intuition, will not sense it. For this reason, we find that at times women uh, is unhappy in her marriage and her husband um, does not understand why. After all, he is treating her respectfully, right? In his mind, he... And, and this is true, right? Like a lot of times, um, it, it's the same thing. All relationships, I, I have a firm belief that all relationships break down because of lack of communication. Um, you know, and you see this with husband and wife. You, you see this probably second, you know, uh, second highest in the employer-employee relationship. And oftentimes, uh, you know, HR is finding out that there's a problem when you're giving your notice. Um, so communication you know, it is the key to everything in life and, and, and it extends beyond even the husband, wife and employer, employee relationship. Um, you have to be honest. And I think that it, it also it provides a release uh, for the things that you're harboring. And of course, everything has to be tempered. You can't just go out and spouting everyone and uh, verbally assaulting everyone that comes your way or upsets you. Um, but you do have to find a way to voice um, something that is causing you um, displeasure and, and find a way to voice that. So it says, but because she understands what is really going on inside him, she's able to, to, discern, to discern his true inner feelings and sense that the real love and appreciation is miss missing, which causes her pain. And the addition, in addition, the relationship between the husband and wife is very delicate. The wife is sensitive to any insult from her husband and vice versa. Therefore, in order for love and peace to reign between them, and for them not to offend each other, there has to be true tikkun hamidot, which means you really have to work on yourself. You really, you guys are a pair and you're a team. Um, if you guys can't get it together, it's not going to hold well for the rest of relationships in your life. And so it concludes by saying, now we can appreciate Ra Rav Chaim Vital's statement that a person's midot are assessed purely on the basis of on how he treats his wife, for it is specifically the marriage relationship that is the indicator of whether a person truly possesses good midot 
Although Rav Chaim Vital said that regarding how a man treats his wife, we can glean from his words that a similar idea would apply to a woman as well. How she treats her husband in the confines of her home is more reflective of her true character and of her true midot. So see women, we see ladies, we have not been let off the hook here. Uh, the Rav is coming to tell us, um, you know, now listen, be honest with yourself. You know, if you are on the road to really, really refine your character trait, you want to improve yourself, you have to be honest with yourself. And that starts with yourself and then it goes into your home. Um, and you know, it's a process. We don't get there. We don't become saints overnight, but we can with Hashem's help. Uh, little by little, we can improve. Um, but, you know, I hope that you guys are taking uh, what we learned today. And the key is to apply it without the application. Honestly, it's just a waste of your time. So I pray that you would, with Hashem's help, apply all that you've learned today and that you would teach all that you've learned today. Uh, but as far as today goes, that's it. And I hope we'll all be together again soon. Bezrat Hashem. If you've enjoyed this video or know someone who would, please share it. If you'd like to be notified of upcoming episodes, click subscribe to be notified.